The evening air was cool, carrying the scent of spring as I adjusted my tie in the reflection of the taxi's window. Tonight was the night of the blind date, arranged by my best friend, Mike. According to him, her name was Elise, a marketing executive with a knack for turning heads and an infectious laugh that could light up any room. I didn't usually go for blind dates, but Mike had been insistent, claiming we'd be the perfect match. I arrived at the upscale bistro downtown, a place chosen for its cozy ambience and soft jazz background that promised a touch of romance. Elise was already there, seated at a table by the window, her silhouette illuminated by the dim candlelight. She was looking out, her profile striking against the backdrop of city lights. Elise, I approached, a hint of nervous anticipation tightening in my chest. She turned, her eyes meeting mine, and something flickered there, surprise, perhaps, or just the shared awkwardness of this first encounter. You must be Alex, she said, her voice smoother than I had imagined, rising gently over the soft clatter of dishes and low murmur of conversations. As I took my seat, the initial awkwardness began to melt away. We started talking, first tentatively, then with increasing ease. We shared stories about our jobs, our love for Italian cuisine, and our mutual frustration with the endless traffic of the city. Her laugh was indeed infectious, and her eyes sparkled with intelligence and humor. The conversation drifted to our ambitions. I've always wanted to start my own business. I confessed, swirling the wine in my glass. Something that challenges the norm, you know. Elise nodded, her eyes alight with interest. I get it. I love my job but there's this creative side of me that's always looking to break free from the corporate ladder. As we talked, the rest of the world seemed to fade into the background. There was an undeniable connection, one that neither of us had expected from a blind date. It felt like the beginning of something new, something exciting, a story just waiting to be written. But little did I know, this was merely the first chapter of a complex tale, one woven with intrigue and shadows that would test the limits of our connection. As the night drew to a close, I walked her to her car, the city lights casting long shadows on the pavement. Thank you for a wonderful evening, Alex, Elise said, her smile genuine. Thank you, Elise. Let's do this again soon? Definitely, she agreed, and with a final smile, she drove into the night, leaving me with a mix of exhilaration and curiosity, eager to see where this unexpected journey might lead. The months following our blind date flew by in a whirl of shared laughter, whispered confessions, and stolen moments. Elise and I found ourselves entwined not just by mutual interests, but by a profound understanding of each other's dreams and vulnerabilities. Our weekends became adventures, exploring flea markets, trying new recipes, and sometimes just lounging at her apartment, mapping out our future dreams on the back of napkins. Six months into our relationship, we took a bold step, moving in together. We found a charming, sunlit apartment on the east side of town, its windows overlooking a bustling street lined with old maple trees. It was our haven, a small world where we built a life together brick by brick. Elise's knack for interior design turned our modest space into a warm, inviting home filled with eclectic art and shelves heavy with books. As I advanced in my marketing career, Elise took a brave leap, starting her own digital marketing firm. Her days were consumed with meetings and pitches, but every evening she returned to our shared space, her eyes alight with the thrill of entrepreneurship. I admired her tenacity, the way she navigated challenges with a grace that made it seem like a dance. One crisp autumn evening as we cooked dinner together in our cramped kitchen, Elise spoke about the future with a hesitant excitement. What do you think about starting a family? She asked, her hand pausing over the salad she was tossing. I looked at her, the fluorescent light catching in her hair, and realized this was everything I had ever wanted. I think it would be amazing, I replied, my heart swelling with the prospect of growing our family, of giving our children the same sense of adventure that had defined our relationship. The decision to have children brought us even closer. We began attending parenting classes, reading every book on child development we could find, and transforming the spare room into a nursery. The joy and anticipation filled our home with an indescribable warmth. Yet, as we built our life together, I couldn't shake off a growing sense of unease. Sometimes I caught Elise staring into the distance, her smile faltering when she thought I wasn't looking. 
There were hushed phone calls she brushed off as just work, and evenings she spent locked in her home office, her brow furrowed in concentration. I told myself it was just the stress of her new business, but a small voice in the back of my mind whispered that there was more she wasn't telling me. Despite these shadows, our life was full of love and laughter, and every day I spent with Elise deepened my conviction that we could face anything together. Yet, I couldn't shake the feeling that our perfect world was more fragile than I wanted to admit. Our life together was bustling with activity and growth, both personal and professional. As we settled into our roles, Elise as an emerging business owner and I as a supportive partner, the dynamic in our relationship began to subtly shift. My own career was on a steady, perhaps less exhilarating path compared to Elise's ambitious entrepreneurial venture, which seemed to consume her every waking moment. Elise's energy was infectious, and her dreams were large. She often talked about how she wanted her agency to revolutionize digital marketing, incorporating cutting-edge technologies and innovative strategies. Her passion for her work was undeniable, and her dedication was intense. I want to build something that lasts, something that makes a real difference, she would say, her eyes gleaming with a fire that both intimidated and attracted me. I admired her truly. Yet, there were moments when I felt left behind, anchored in the practicalities of our life while she swore. Despite these feelings, I threw myself into supporting her dream. I attended networking events, proofread her proposals, and listened intently as she discussed her day-to-day -day challenges. In many ways, her dream had become our dream, but the distinction between support and overshadowing began to blur. One evening, as I watched her across our living room, surrounded by piles of paperwork and her laptop screen glowing in the dim light, I realized how much of our conversation had shifted. We talked less about us and more about her business deals, marketing strategies, and the endless need for funding. Elise, I ventured, my voice cutting through the click of her keyboard, do you think we can take a weekend off soon? Maybe go to the lake like we used to. I missed the simplicity of our early days, the effortless connection that didn't require scheduling or an agenda. She looked up, her expression softening. I'd love that, she said sincerely, but then her phone buzzed and her attention shifted instantly. I have to take this, she said, apologetic yet distant as she picked up the call and turned away. As I sat there, listening to her laughter and energetic assurances on the phone, a realization dawned on me. While Elise was building her dream, I was slowly fading into the background of her bustling new world. My own desires, simple and perhaps a bit mundane, like weekend getaways and quiet dinners, seemed trivial in comparison to her high-stakes business decisions. The transformation was both awe-inspiring and isolating. I loved her for her ambition and her fearlessness, but I mourned the private moments that had become casualties of her success. The balance between sharing her dream and maintaining our relationship was delicate and becoming increasingly difficult to manage. That night, as Elise returned to her work after her call, I made a silent promise to myself. I would find a way to share in her dream without losing our connection. It was a promise filled with love and a whisper of fear. Fear that the dream she was building might one day replace the life we had envisioned together. Months rolled into years, and as Elise's business thrived, our relationship began to show subtle signs of strain. The balance I had hoped to achieve between supporting her dreams and maintaining our connection seemed increasingly elusive. Our home, once a sanctuary of shared dreams and intimacy, gradually transformed into a hub of constant activity, with Elise often absorbed in her work. One particularly chilly evening, I returned home to find Elise in the kitchen, her laptop open beside a stack of documents seemingly oblivious to the cold dinner on the table. Her brow was furrowed in concentration, a clear indication of the stress she was under. Busy day? I asked, my voice tinged with a weariness I hadn't intended to reveal. Elise glanced up, startled, as if she had forgotten I was expected home at this hour. Oh, Alex, I didn't hear you come in. Yes, it's been non-stop. I'm prepping for a big pitch tomorrow, she replied, her eyes darting back to the screen before her. I nodded, trying to mask the disappointment that she hadn't noticed the time or the effort I'd put into making dinner. I made your favorite, lasagna. It's probably cold now, but I can warm it up. I offered, hoping to recapture some semblance of our old routine. 
That sounds great, but I actually ate already. Grab something with the team, she said absently, typing away. The news stung more than I expected. Oh, I see. No problem, I managed to say, keeping my voice even. The room grew uncomfortably silent, the soft tapping of Elise's keyboard filling the space between us. As I warmed up my dinner alone, I couldn't help but reflect on how often this scene had played out recently. Our conversations had dwindled to brief exchanges about schedules and deadlines. The warmth and laughter that used to fill our home seemed like a distant memory, replaced by the cold efficiency of Elise's burgeoning career. A few days later, I decided to address the growing distance between us. Elise, can we talk? I asked one evening, catching her as she was about to retreat to her office after a quick dinner. She looked up, a flash of concern crossing her features. Of course. What's up? It's about us, I started, hesitating as I searched for the right words. I feel like we're drifting apart. You're so wrapped up in your work, and I feel left out. Elise's expression softened, and she took a deep breath. I'm sorry, Alex. I didn't realize you felt that way. It's just been so hectic with the business. I know, and I'm proud of you. But I miss us, Elise. I miss how things used to be when we could just enjoy being together. She nodded, her eyes reflecting a mixture of sadness and fatigue. I miss us too. Let's make more time for each other, okay? Maybe we can start having date nights again? The conversation felt like a breakthrough, and a glimmer of hope flickered within me. We agreed to set aside time for just the two of us, starting with a date night the following week. However, as the days passed, old patterns resurfaced. Calls from clients and last-minute meetings began to encroach on the fragile promises we had made to each other. Our planned date night came and went, with a lease canceling at the last minute due to an urgent work crisis. Feeling sidelined once again, I began to question whether the foundation we had built together was strong enough to withstand the pressures of her career. The cracks were small but growing, and I feared they might eventually lead to a chasm neither of us could bridge. Our attempts to mend the fractures in our relationship continued to falter under the weight of Elise's relentless work schedule. Each canceled date and missed dinner deepened the crevice between us, filling me with a mixture of resentment and loneliness I couldn't quite shake off. It was during one of these solitary evenings that the foundation of our life together began to truly crumble. It was a rainy Tuesday when I came home earlier than usual, hoping to surprise Elise with a quiet evening together. The lights were dim in our apartment, and I expected to find her working late in her office as usual. Instead, the sound of hushed voices halted me in my tracks. They were coming from Elise's study, the door slightly ajar. Curiosity edged by a gnawing sense of dread pushed me closer. It wasn't like Elise to have meetings at home without telling me. Standing by the door, I could just make out her silhouette through the gap, her posture tense. The voice that answered hers was unmistakably male, smooth and confident. I didn't recognize it. Are you sure he doesn't suspect anything? The voice asked, low and insidious. There was a pause, heavy and laden with meaning. Alex trusts me completely, Elise responded, her tone laced with something I couldn't quite decipher. Guilt? Regret? It was hard to tell. The conversation that followed shattered the remnants of my trust. They discussed a business trip that was apparently a guise for something far more personal. My heart raced as the implications settled in, cold and heavy. I retreated from the door, my mind reeling. Confusion and betrayal warred within me as I sank onto the sofa, trying to process what I had just overheard. The temptation to confront her immediately was strong, but I needed time to think, to understand the full scope of her deception. The next few days were a blur of pretense. I watched Elise, noting the ease with which she lied about her upcoming trip, wondering how long this had been going on. The feeling of being an outsider in my own relationship was suffocating. Finally, with her departure imminent, I confronted her. Elise, we need to talk about your trip. I began, trying to keep my voice steady. She looked at me, a flicker of unease crossing her features. What about it? She asked cautiously. I know it's not just for business, I said flatly. Who is he, Elise? The color drained from her face, her usual composure slipping. Alex, I... I don't know what you heard, but... I heard enough. 
I cut her off, the hurt clear in my voice. How long, Elise? How long have you been lying to me? The ensuing conversation was painful. Elise admitted to an affair that had started months ago with a client who had become much more. She spoke of confusion, a feeling overwhelmed by her feelings and her fear of losing what we had, but she had already risked it all, and there was no unhearing her words, no unseeing her deceit. As she packed her bags for the trip she still intended to take, I realized that the Elise I knew, the woman I loved, had been slipping away from me long before her secret came to light. I was left to ponder the ruins of our relationship, unsure if the trust we had built could ever be restored, or if I was even willing to try. The air was thick with tension as Elise returned from her trip, a palpable barrier between us that had turned our once warm and vibrant home into a silent battle round. We moved around each other like ghosts, our interactions brief and strained. The truth about her affair, now an open wound in our relationship, seemed to loom over every moment we shared. A few days after her return, I couldn't bear the weight of silence any longer. The uncertainty and hurt had festered into a relentless ache, demanding resolution or release. We need to talk, Elise, I said one evening as she sat at the kitchen table, her eyes avoiding mine. She nodded slowly, her expression resigned. I know, I owe you an explanation, at the very least. As we sat across from each other, the familiar distance between us felt insurmountable. Why? Was all I could muster, a single word laden with all the hurt and betrayal I felt. Elise sighed, her hands clasped tightly together. I never planned for any of this to happen, Alex. It started as just a business relationship, but things got personal very quickly. She paused, searching for the right words. He understood the pressures of my work, the stress. It was easy to talk to him, and one thing led to another. And that justifies it. My voice was sharper than I intended, my emotions raw. No, it doesn't, she admitted, her voice breaking slightly. I'm not trying to justify it. I made a terrible mistake. I let it go too far, and I hurt you deeply. I'm so sorry, Alex. Her apology hung in the air, heavy and inadequate. Do you love him? I asked, the question cutting through the last thread of hope I held for us. Elise hesitated, then shook her head slowly. No, it wasn't about love. It was an escape, a way to deal with the pressure. That's not an excuse, I know. I was selfish. The simplicity of her answer did little to ease the pain. Where does this leave us, Elise? Can we even go back to how things were? I asked, the reality of our situation settling in. She looked at me, her eyes filled with sorrow. I don't know, Alex. I want to make things right, but I understand if you can't forgive me. I've broken something essential between us. The room was silent as we both contemplated the ruins of our relationship. The thought of ending things was heartbreaking, yet the betrayal felt like an insurmountable barrier. I need time, I said finally, my voice low. Time to think about what I want, about if I can move past this. Elise nodded, her face pale. Of course, take all the time you need. I'll do whatever it takes to make this right, if that's even possible. As she stood up and walked away, the space between us felt colder and more pronounced than ever. The confrontation had laid everything bare, and now the hard work of deciding whether our love could survive her betrayal lay ahead. The future of our relationship was uncertain, and as I watched her retreat, I wondered if the chasm between us could ever truly be bridged. The days following our confrontation were some of the longest and most reflective of my life. As I weighed the balance of our relationship against the betrayal, I found myself consulting a divorce attorney not out of a decision, but out of a need to understand my options. It was a pragmatic step, one that felt both alien and necessary given the circumstances. The attorney's office was stark and professional, a stark contrast to the emotional turmoil I felt. Mr. Thompson, based on what you've shared, you have several options regarding how to proceed. The attorney, Ms. Bennett, explained, laying out documents that seemed to echo the seriousness of our conversation. I'm not sure I'm ready to make any decisions yet. I confessed, feeling out of place in the cold legality of her office. I just need to know what's possible. Of course, Ms. Bennett nodded, understanding color in her tone. If you choose to file for divorce, the proceedings will depend greatly on whether it is contested or uncontested. 
Given your situation where infidelity plays a role, this could impact the division of assets and even the proceedings itself. I listened, a knot forming in my stomach. Divorce had always seemed like a distant reality, something that happened to other people. Yet here I was discussing it as a tangible possibility. We can also discuss separation agreements if you're not ready to fully commit to a divorce. This would give both you and Mrs. Thompson some space to evaluate your relationship further without immediate legal finality, she continued. The options were overwhelming. Each path was laced with legal implications that seemed to make the emotional healing even more complicated. What about if we try to work things out? Is there anything that needs to be done legally? I asked, a part of me still clinging to the hope of reconciliation. In cases where reconciliation might be a possibility, I recommend drafting a postnuptial agreement, Ms. Bennett suggested. It can outline the financial arrangements upon reconciliation, providing a safety net should things not work out in the future. The idea of a postnuptial agreement hadn't occurred to me. It felt like a betrayal in its own right, yet I couldn't dismiss the practicality it offered. Could you prepare some information on that for me? I think I need to discuss all of this with Elise before any decisions are made. Absolutely, she agreed, her voice reassuring. Take all the time you need to make the best decision for your circumstances. Leaving her office, I felt armed with information but heavy with the weight of it. The legal maneuvers necessary to protect myself were clear, yet the emotional path forward was murky and uncertain. As I drove home, I contemplated the complexity of love and legality, realizing that the next conversation with Elise would be pivotal in determining the course of our lives. After weeks of introspection, countless discussions, and sleepless nights, Elise and I decided to take a step neither of us had anticipated at the start of this ordeal. We chose to work towards reconciliation. The decision came neither easily nor lightly. It was born from lengthy, often painful conversations and a shared history that neither of us could fully let go. In our pursuit of a fresh start, we agreed to see a couple's therapist. Dr. Simmons, a recommendation from a friend, turned out to be a gentle yet firm mediator in our sessions. Healing isn't just about forgiveness, she told us during one of our first meetings. It's also about understanding the why, rebuilding trust, and setting a foundation for the future. Our therapy sessions were tough. They peeled back layers of neglected communication, unvoiced expectations, and buried resentments. But they also revealed the depth of our connection, the reasons we had fallen in love, and why, despite everything, we both wanted to try again. Elise and I learned to communicate better, to share our daily stresses and triumphs in ways we had neglected before. We rediscovered empathy, slowly bridging the chasm that had widened between us. The process was slow, sometimes frustratingly so, but there was a renewed commitment to each other that kept us moving forward. Outside of therapy, we began implementing us time, designated periods each week dedicated solely to each other, free from the distractions of work or technology. Whether it was a quiet dinner out or a walk in the local park, these moments became our sanctuary, a place to reconnect and remember why we had chosen each other in the first place. As part of our new beginning, we also drafted a postnuptial agreement. It was a difficult decision, a balance between practicality and the hopeful belief that we would never need it. Sitting down with Ms. Bennett again, we discussed our options and constructed a document that protected both of our interests, but also symbolized our commitment to rebuilding our marriage. Think of it as a safety net, Elise said one evening, her hand finding mine across the kitchen table. Not because we plan to fall, but because we're determined to fly without fear. Signing the postnuptial agreement didn't bring the sense of finality I had feared. Instead, it offered a sense of security, allowing us to focus on the present and future rather than the past. Months turned into a year since our decision to reconcile. The journey was not seamless, marked by occasional setbacks and lingering doubts, but also by significant progress and deepening trust. We renewed our vows in a small, intimate ceremony on our anniversary, surrounded by a handful of friends and family who had supported us through our darkest times and now celebrated our new beginning with us. Standing beside Elise, exchanging vows with a deeper understanding and respect for their weight, I felt a surge of hope. We had come through a storm, battered but not broken, and now we stood together, 
ready to face whatever the future held. A new beginning wasn't what I had envisioned that day I overheard her conversation, but life is often unpredictable. Our path hadn't been easy, but it was ours, chosen together and walked side by side. And in that shared journey, I found not just forgiveness, but a renewal of our love that was deeper and more resilient than before. As the glow of our renewed vows began to settle into the routine of our daily lives, the moments of quiet reflection became more frequent and poignant. One crisp autumn evening, as I watched the sunset paint the sky with strokes of orange and purple, I found myself deeply ensconced in thoughts of the past and the tumultuous journey Elise and I had navigated. The path to where we were had been anything but straightforward. It was littered with the dubious of our old lives and the scars of betrayal. While we had chosen to forge a new beginning, the road there was paved with many moments of doubt and pain that neither of us could forget, nor entirely forgive. Sitting on our back porch, Elise joined me, her presence a comforting warmth at my side. We watched the day slowly fade into the encroaching night. It was during these quiet times that we often found the courage to voice deeper truths. Alex, Elise began softly, breaking the silence that had settled between us. Do you ever regret forgiving me? Do you ever wonder if it was the right thing to do? Her question hung in the air, heavy with the weight of unspoken fears. I took a deep breath, considering her words. Sometimes I admitted the honesty of the statement raw between us. Sometimes I wonder if it wouldn't have been easier to start anew alone. But then I look at how far we've come, the work we've put in, and how much stronger, how much more real our connection feels now. Those thoughts dissipate. Elise nodded, squeezing my hand gently. I regret the pain I caused you every single day, she said quietly. If I could take it back, I would in a heartbeat. Not just because of the hurt it caused, but because it nearly cost me the most important person in my life. I looked over at her, the fading light casting shadows across her face, highlighting the sincerity in her eyes, and I appreciate that Elise, we've both learned a lot about ourselves and each other. We've grown. There's no easy road to where we are, and maybe that's okay. Maybe it needed to be hard for us to truly understand the value of what we have. It's strange, she mused, how sometimes the worst moments of our lives bring about the best changes. I've learned more about love, trust, and resilience in the last year than I ever thought possible. And so have I, I agreed. It's not just about getting through the bad times, but growing from them, becoming better together. We sat in silence for a while longer, each lost in our thoughts. The journey of reflection and regret was a personal one, unique to each of us. Yet it was also a shared path, one that had ultimately led to a deeper, more profound connection. As the last light of the day vanished, replaced by the first stars of the night, I realized that our story was one of true human complexity, filled with faults and forgiveness. It wasn't a fairy tale, but it was ours and it was real. The regrets, all present, were far outweighed by the lessons learned and the love that had deepened between us. This chapter of our lives, marked by reflection and understanding, was crucial. It reminded us that while the past could not be changed, the future was still ours to write, and as we stood up to go inside, our fingers intertwined, there was a silent vow between us to keep writing it together, no matter what the next day would bring. As the seasons changed and time continued to march on, Elise and I found our rhythm again, but this time with a new awareness and a deeper understanding of each other's needs and boundaries. The therapy sessions that had once seemed like a lifeline now became regular check-ins, spaces where we could reaffirm our commitment and track our progress. It was during these sessions that we truly grasped the meaning of moving forward, not just side by side, but truly together. One cool spring morning over coffee in our newly renovated kitchen, a project we undertook together as a symbol of our new beginning, I reflected on how much had changed. You know, I started looking over at Elise, who was flipping through a magazine. I think we're finally at a place where we can say we've turned a page. Elise looked up, her smile cautious but genuine. It does feel different, doesn't it? Like we're building something new on the foundation of what we've learned. Yes, I agreed. It's not about forgetting the past, but about using it to build a better future. With that mindset, we began planning more actively for the future we were reconstructing together. We revisited dreams that had been put on hold, traveling to Europe, 
renovating the house, exploring new hobbies together, and even renewing our social ties with friends and family whom we had neglected during our turbulent times. Moving forward also meant redefining our professional lives in a way that did not compromise our personal relationship. Elise made a conscious effort to balance her work commitments, delegating more responsibilities to her team. I admired how she managed to transform her leadership style, fostering an environment where her presence wasn't always mandatory. For my part, I took up consulting, which allowed me a more flexible schedule. This shift gave me more time at home and the opportunity to support Elise's endeavors without sacrificing my career aspirations. It was a balance that had once seemed elusive but now felt natural. As we implemented these changes, our relationship blossomed in new and unexpected ways. We laughed more, argued less, and found joy in small, everyday moments. Cooking dinner together, gardening on weekends, or just walking the dog in the evening. One evening, as we sat on our back porch watching the sunset, a ritual that had become our moment of daily reflection and connection, Elise turned to me. Do you think we've made it through the worst? She asked, her voice tinged with a mix of hope and vulnerability. I took her hand in mine, feeling the familiar warmth of her skin against mine. I think so, I replied after a moment. I think we have. And whatever comes next, we'll handle it together. Together, she echoed, leaning her head on my shoulder. This chapter of our lives, marked by resilience and rebirth, taught us that moving forward isn't just about advancing from one point to another. It's about growing internally and together, learning from each misstep, and celebrating every small victory. It's about knowing that even the deepest wounds can heal, and the most broken roads can lead to beautiful destinations. As we plan our trip to Italy for the upcoming summer, a trip we had postponed for years, I realized that moving forward was not just a journey but a destination in itself, one that Elise and I were crafting with every choice, every compromise, and every shared dream. This wasn't just a new chapter in our lives. It was a whole new book waiting to be written. I was grateful to be the co-author of this story with the woman I loved.